Hi everyone. So in this video, we are going to see how we can make a WebSocket connection and we can store the real time data into a database. So before proceeding ahead with this video, you should be good with database, like how to insert the table, how to delete and all. Second, you should be good with WebSocket, how you can make a WebSocket connection, how you can get real time data. So this code we have already discussed in our WebSocket session in which we get the access token, we make the WebSocket object. So for that, we just need to import this of isapi.websocket. Then we have to make a new token, which is nothing but client ID and my previous token. Then I have made a list of all the tickers that I want real-time data of. And finally, I have made an object of WebSocket. Then before making a connection, you have to make a function. Okay, so we will be editing this function in our uh, coming code. So let's start with making a database. Okay, now you want to make a database first. So we will be using SQLite 3 library. So first I've imported the SQLite 3 library. Then I'm making a database. So in this case, I'm making a database by the name realtime.db. Okay, so the moment I run this code, a database will be created uh, in my directory. Okay, so before that, let me run this first. So I'm importing everything. Then I'm making a new token. Then I'm making WebSocket object. Then this function I will be updating. So I'm not running this. Now I'll make a database. Now you see a database is created by the name realtime.db. This is the first step. Now I need to make a table in that database. Now what table? Table should be the name of the stock. So in this case, this is what I have subscribed for. That is crude oil 2020, uh, 22 November future. This is the stock name. So this is the name of the table that I want. Okay. So I'm storing it in a list that is S. Okay, then I've made a function create table, which will take this S as an argument. So I'm calling this here and all it is doing is it's creating a table. Okay. Now when it created a table, it created three columns. First is the date time in which I will be storing the date. Second is the price, real time price. And the third is volume. So these three things I'm planning to save into my database. So if I run the code now, currently in my real time database, there is nothing, but the moment I run this code, there will be a table. So I'll run this. Now, if I go to my real time DB, you see, I have to open it again. There is a table. Okay. So I've finally created a table. Now I want to add this data real time. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll go to my code again. And I've made a function called as insert tick. Now what this insert tick function will do, this insert tick function is going to get the data, whatever I will get from the server. I'll trace all the important thing. What are the important thing? Three things. First is the stock name. Second, uh, no, first will be the timestamp or at what time I'm getting the data. Second will be the actual price at that timestamp. And the third will be the volume. These three things I need, which I'm planning to store into my database. So within this insert take function, first I'm going through all the messages. Okay, because I, if I have multiple tickers, so I may have to go through all the tickers one by one. Then first is LTP. This is the first thing. Then there are a few more things that I'm uh, tracing that is high, which is not needed because I'm not storing it anywhere. Volume is needed because this is something I have to store. Uh, then the time, you know, the timestamp that I'm getting, I'm converting it into proper string so that it can be stored properly. Now the name part. Now, if you notice the name of the sticker is actually this. You know, it, ha it is having M MCX colon and then uh, the real name. So what I'm doing, I'm taking this entire string. I'm removing the first four uh, character from the string. So this is what I'm doing on this line that is line 10. Okay. After getting all the three things, I'm just uh, writing a simple code to insert all the three things into my database. That is insert into the database and values are these. Okay. So if I run this particular function, what will happen? Whatever data I'm getting, it is going to trace all the three things that I need and all the three things will be stored into the database. So I have written two more uh, line of code. First is try and try. I'm just committing the code. If there is any problem, I'm just going to roll back. So this is what I've done in my insert take function. So I'm going to run this way. Now we will move to our uh, WebSocket function. So within the WebSocket function, all I'm doing is I'm calling this insert take function and I'm sending this message, whatever message I'm getting from the WebSocket, I'm just sending this message. This insert tick function is going to trace back and store everything into my database. So this is it. Now, finally, I'm going to start my connection. Now, if you notice right now in my database, there is nothing, but the moment I will start the connection, 
the real time data will start adding into my database. So let me show you. I'm going to run this code now and you will see that will start adding the data. So yeah, you can see it is inserted, inserted. Now if I go here and if I click here, I have to open it again, I'll open it again. Click here, you see the data is added. So this is how you can add the data. I'll refresh it. You see more data is being added. Every second new, new tick data is being added. So this is how you can get data real time and store it in the database. Now, once you have stored it in a database, you can use it for whatever you want. You know, maybe you want to do some back test or whatever it is. So now we have seen how we can get the WebSocket data and we can store it in a database. You can see that the program is still running. It is continuously fetching the data and it is storing it in a real time .db database. The moment I refresh it, more rows are added into my database. Now the question is how I can retrieve this database. Now the good thing about storing into a SQL data is you can get the data at the same time. You don't need to stop the connection. In the same time, you can get the data from that database. So let's try to do that. So I've made a file called as retrieve database. So in this first, I'm importing SQLite, then I'm importing pandas. Then I need a list of all the table name. So for now, since I only have one table name, so I'm only using S equal to the table name. Then I will make a con object by taking the name of the database that is realtime.db. Then finally, I'm just reading the SQL query by writing this code. And at the end, I'm just printing it. So what will happen if I run this code? It is going to fetch the data from realtime.db and it is going to show me in the output stream. So I'll just save this file. And you see here, I have two shell open. One is this Python file in which the WebSocket is still running. And this is another PowerShell. So in this PowerShell, I'm going to run the code. So let's run it. So you can see I've got the data. So I have three columns. One is the timestamp, then price and volume. The timestamp keeps getting updated. Not only timestamp, all of them are keep getting updated. And this is what I'm getting. The starting time is uh, like 23.07 and now it is 23.29. So for the past 20 to 23 minutes, it is still going on. So this is how you can retrieve the database. But if you look at the data that you have got, it is tick by tick. And you might want to convert this tick by tick data into OHLC data. That is open, high, low, close data, candle data. How do you do that? So that is also simple. So I have another piece of code. This seven line of code can convert that tick by tick data into OHLC data. Let's see how I'm doing it. First, I'm changing the column name. So it is right now it is TS. So I want to change it to date. This is the first step. Then I'm making the date as an index. Now, when I'm getting the data from a database, it is in the string format. So I need to convert the string into a date time format. So that is what I'm doing it on the line 11. Then I'm taking the price. Because now whatever price column I have, I need to convert this price column into uh, OHLC, open, high, low, close data. Then I have the volume section. So both I'm saving it in different variable. Finally, I'm using the resample function on both of them. So line 14 is responsible for resampling my volume and line 15 is resampling for my price into four different column that is open, high, low, close. So finally, if I save the file and if I run the code, you'll see I will be having OHLC data. So this is tick by tick data. This is OHLC data. Right now I've written here one T. So it is convert. It is giving me one minute data. So you can see here this is seven. Then this is eight. This is nine, 10. So this is how you can get the data from a database. So even if the database is still running, you know, data is being stored in the uh, database. Still, you can open it and fetch the data in this manner. 